Well, Jack, I think that uh, now's a good time as any to bring our guest up to the microphone. And since you gave me the courtesy of telling the folks who he was, why don't you uh, go through the introductory period here? Well, if you have to introduce this fellow, that means that if you have to have him introduced to you, that means you must have been living in a cave or something for the last uh, <clears throat> years. Well, my grandmother hasn't seen a movie since Warner Baxter. I mean, now you ball that around. Maybe she hasn't seen Mr. Stewart work. Well, That's kind of an incongruous situation, though. I'll I remember say. Warner Baxter very well, you know. <laughs> this is Jimmy Stewart, and brother, here is a man. Jimmy, welcome to Chicago. Thank you, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Last time we had Jim on these microphones, you were uh, busy at the ballpark and weren't able to get here, as I recall. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jim, uh, you have a particular reason for being here. You might as well tell us what it is. Well, my one reason for being here is just I'm on my way home uh, from Washington. I've been there for about ten days working on a picture, the FBI story. Uh -huh. uh, that's the first reason. Then the second reason, I'm, I'm sort of here to put in a good word for another picture that uh, is opening here Christmas Day, I think, at the Woods Theater. Uh, I'm, uh, I did the picture with a local girl... Uh, you may have heard of uh, Kim Novak. We've heard of her. Wow. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> and uh, it's a sort of a comedy. As a matter of fact, I use that term uh, uh, not loosely because we'll find out after Christmas whether it's a comedy or not. But I, <laughs> I like to believe it is. I hope it is because I think maybe we could use some. I hope this sort of is a part of a trend. I think uh, the movies have been taking themselves too seriously for the last several years, and I, I hope we can get some that uh, people can go to the movie theater and come out laughing instead of come out scratching themselves or, or uh, well, uh, and go to a psychiatrist or something. I was going to say, I'm glad you're in a comedy. The last two uh, couple of pictures I saw you in, I had to sort of sweat it out there with you. You had your leg broken in one, and you were a victim... Uh, where well, you witnessed this murder that was in the rear window. Mm -hmm. And then the other picture was uh, Vertigo, and that was, that was a rough thing. Was yeah, well, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I've gotten a little tired of that myself. <laughs> I was <laughs> suspense and intrigue. Yeah. An old friend of yours was shooting right in front of this building not long ago, Alfred Hitchcock. Yes, well, I, he, he, uh, he was here, I think, with the uh, Cary Grant picture. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, I'm a great Hitchcock fan. He's, I think he has about as much talent as anybody in the business. He's a, a real exciting man to work for. He, uh, he, he seems to have just a bottomless pit of talent. I, I don't know where he gets his energy and where he gets his imagination and his talent. He, it's, uh, he's one in a million. Jimmy, I, I remember this fellow, if for no other reason than the fact that he cast you as a murderer. And that, uh... I, I confess, I would not ever suspect you of being able to get away with the part of a murderer, and you did, and that won the rope. That was uh -huh. Hitchcock, wasn't it? Yeah, but I wasn't, uh, I, I, I was a detective in that one. No, 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 I'm talking about one where you were a murderer. Now, which one am I thinking of? Well, that's way, way, boy, you're... With Rosalind right. Russell. No, that was the one, well, uh, Grace thin man. Kelly, rather, Grace Kelly, no? Yeah, well, that, well, that was a Hitchcock picture, yeah. but I caught the murderer... Not one. The only time That's where right. I've killed anybody, yeah. uh, where I wanted to do it, was uh, way back years ago in one of the Thin Man pictures, one after the Thin Man. And uh, no. they, finally, they no. finally discovered that I was the real killer. Well, that, that wasn't the Hitchcock, then. No. Well, I, I'm wrong. Uh, but I know that, uh, that, that I have this sharp memory. I know I have a sharp memory of your being... A murderer, because when you walked in the studio today, it just seemed, uh, here's this pleasant, placid, gentlemanly fellow who, uh, you know, is great well, at everything Jack. he does. And, well, it's and, close, but I, I remember him as a that murderer. Was the, that was the picture where I almost got murdered. I, maybe maybe that's what you meant. Which the, picture are you referring to? What was the title of this rear, picture? Rear Window. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where you... That's the leg was broken. Yeah, actually, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, you had a broken leg in that one. Yeah. It was coming back to yeah. me. Yeah. You had Grace Kelly. And the murderer through. came and threw me out the window and, and uh, broke, <laughs> broke, broke my other one. leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad uh, we're nice and confused. It's a good way yeah. to get the show started. <laughs> well, you know, that, uh, that last picture, that vertigo, uh, I was going to ask you, you're talking about trends and, uh, and casting. I know that for a while, William Powell and Myrna Loy were usually linked together in most of their pictures, and now this is a 
what, the second second picture you made with Kim mm -hmm. Novak. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to be a, a sort of a team type thing? Or I don't know. It's okay with me. You don't mind at all? No, I <laughs> don't mind at all. I know this is an entirely different kind of a thing. It's, uh, as I say, sort of a light, light comedy thing. Kim's awful good in it. Uh, she's, uh, the other thing, the birdie girl, this is kind of a tough assignment, you know. It's a dual role, and it's kind of heavy, and this is a uh, kind of tough stuff to do. But I think Kim learned a lot, an awful lot from Hitchcock. And, uh, in this thing, uh, Bell, Book, and Candle, uh, she, she does an awful good job. And I think, uh, I think Chicago will be proud of their Kim. I remember reading a quote by uh, one of the syndicated Hollywood columnists on you not long ago, Jimmy, in which you, uh, I guess, uh, if you're quoted correctly in this thing, took a pretty good whack at some of the younger generation of actors and actresses who, I guess, uh, your, your real beef was that they come to Hollywood and then can't wait to get back to New York or keep screaming and hollering mm. that they want to get out of there. Do you remember the, the piece? Yeah, I think it was. It was on the Daily Variety, I know. A fellow came out, Dave Kaufman, I know very well. And uh, it just happened. I was in a talkative mood, I guess, and, he, and so he printed it. <laughs> I don't talk very much usually, but uh, I did this day. Yeah, I sort of uh, sounded off about uh, this young crowd and about movies in general. I, I have a very strong feeling about... Uh, the sort of the method actors, I suppose you'd call them. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bored with all that. I, uh, I'm getting a little bored with the fact that uh, they, they seem to feel that uh, they, they, they go to this method school of whatever it is, and there's some kind of a high priest, and he <laughs> waves a, a magic wand over them and touches them, and then... Uh, evidently, that means that they're destined for immortality. And <laughs> actually, uh, they can do no wrong, and and they can. There, there isn't anything, uh, as far as acting is concerned, or writing, or directing, or raising a family, or anything, or being in politics that they can't do, and. Uh, it, it makes it kind of tough for people around them that have to work with them because you have to sort of wait around for these people to get this message from the from this uh, spiritual being that they sort of <laughs> go to and sometimes it takes hours before they the, this comes to them and this gets a little tiring Meantime, and, uh, the whole crew is being held and then uh, so many times it happens that when they finally do come out with this inspirational thing that they're going to give to the public who is waiting for them. Uh, you either can't understand what they say or uh, they do it so badly that uh, you have to do it all over again. I, I'm... <laughs> I'm a little. I, I, I think that was... Uh, the one. Jimmy, I would assume that you work with some of these people to have uh, adopted this first-hand opinion. No, um, I haven't worked with very, very many of them, but I... How many of them are I working? Know, <laughs> I know some of them, and uh, I know a lot of directors who have worked with them. And uh, it's pretty tough. It, it, it's pretty tough. Evan, uh, the thing I object most, m most of all is that they seem to insist that the only way to do anything right is to improvise. And they have no, they have no basis of skill they have no they, they haven't learned the fundamentals they haven't learned to to walk before they can water ski you know mm -hmm. it, they that they they, uh, they have nothing to rely on except uh improvisation and i think probably this is sort of a sign of the times you know in music today uh so much of the so much of the uh music is improvisation. Now, this is fine, up to a point. I know, I read a thing the other day about a fellow, a very famous fella, I suppose there's no use in mentioning his name, who was, uh, had a, a wonderful pianist and had a great jazz band for a long time, and suddenly he announced that he was taking piano lessons. 
And this came as a great shock to everybody, but he, his explanation was that uh, he thought that if, if he was going to keep on breaking the rules, he might as well learn what the rules are. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, this goes into acting, too. That's a good comparison there, Jim. Well, now, your, your early days, uh, for example, were spent in the acting business in the company of some other people who have been, uh, developed uh, very great uh, reputations in the movie business, weren't they? Yeah, I was in a stock company... Uh, years ago when I first got out of college up in Massachusetts uh, Margaret Sullivan, Hank Fonda Kent Smith, Myron McCormick uh, Tane Windust, uh, Millie Natwick uh, these are people that have that have gone on in the theater and uh, this certainly wasn't a uh, a wild crowd of people that uh, uh, there wasn't any question about improvisation as far as we were concerned. Uh, it was a question of learning and learning by experience. Mm -hmm. We'd all been to college. We all had a sort of a basis as far as education is concerned. So many people come up to me and say, well, now I want to get in. I want to act. I know I can. I'm just sure. And uh, I, I just don't want to waste my time in school. Now, what do I do? And uh, I, I say, well, in the first place, let's, let's get something straight. Uh, you're, you're completely off base as far as wasting your time in school. I think if, uh, if you want to act, you ju just go to school and study English and a couple of foreign languages and uh, history and uh, some mathematics if you can do it and a little science and then after you get that basis well then if you want to go in the theater uh, there are plenty of training grounds where you can uh, where you can start with it but get that basis first